Today, I'm finally making the controls of my character, cause I don't like him staring at me from the void, and I'll give him a landscape to wander in, with some basic structures and elements, to have something that might resemble the actual game environment. Hi, my name is Ibra, making an RPG game, and this is my third devlog. In the last devlog, we made the animation of our main character, AO. And right from the top, these background checkers really bugged me. I don't know, the second I try to wear my developer hat, my artist personality drags me back in. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. So I took a little detour, as usual, and decided to make a basic sketch to the environment. You know, just a tiny little sketch. It wasn't necessary, but I had to do it. I think it's a compulsive thing. So the idea of the game is a sole survivor in a post-apocalyptic world that only inhabited by robots. And the way of designing the environment should resemble the fight between nature and technology. Something that you can see a lot in Miyazaki's movies. So maybe you'll have some huge destroyed robots that being overwhelmed with vegetation alongside some abandoned buildings and structures that could be used as a base of operation for our character. And while working on that, I kept in mind not to make a flat terrain. Instead, to have a lot of levels in the landscape that will make you always get the sense that you have something to see behind that cliff. So it won't feel repetitive, even though we are going to repeat a lot of elements to create the environment. So I made this quick sketch that contains all that we need as a start. Base of operation, check. Farming area, check. Fishing quarters, check. And since now I have the basic design, I thought, okay, I'll push it a little bit further and create a 3D block out for my environment, which is something temporary just to test my character controls inside it. And with that comes the challenge of how we're gonna do it. Should we model the whole scene? Nah, that will be a waste of time. The best way to do it is modular. So if you want to know how we can transfer this sketch into 3D, something like this, with a minimum amount of effort, I'll try to explain. This is our sketch. It contains a lot of elements, such as rocks, building, road, and so on. First thing, we analyze the scene and separate these elements into groups. So the rocks, for example, could have three types. The cliffs that resemble some sort of a wall, a big rock that could be blocking the player movement in some areas, and small rocks that could be added alongside the road. Second step, we design a different variation of these rocks. So later on, we can use them to populate our level, rotate them, flip them, scale them, and put them upside down so they will be spread throughout the scene without repeating. The more element we have, the less repetitive the scene will be. And now with these elements designed and ready, the third step will be to create our landscape by sculpting the terrain in our real engine and finally filling the scene with these rocks and assembling the structures in it. And when it comes to the building, I made it modular itself and separated it into many pieces so it could be assembled like a Lego in different ways with different levels and rooms in it. The same thing I did for the road, and you can see here we can extend the road by just duplicating these parts, and how can I add these crumbling sides in the way that I want it here. And also I found this cool water plugin that you can add normally into a real engine. Of course here it looks very realistic, and I'm going with more stylized approach, so I'll definitely change it in the future, and as a result we ended up with this scene to start testing in. Well, finally. That took a really long time on the outside before I actually start working on the development of the game. I've been through a lot and made too many mistakes and errors. From designing the character with the bad silhouette to over sculpting it. I mean, what is this? It's like a muscle baby. And also not considering the animations when making the geometry of the character that cause it to overlap. Add to that all the error mates when rigging. Yeah, but believe me guys, going through all this really worth it. I mean, I could have considered a simpler style with flat colors and engine shaders or even use character library from Unreal Engine Marketplace. But then, doing it the hard way really increased my skills and made me more familiar with the whole game development pipeline, especially the artistic part of it. But now, the initial art part is done, so time to focus on the programming and development side. And with that, I was so excited to start my next step, which is making the basic control of the character, like walking, running, and jumping, and after long hours of tutorials and learning about blueprints, I figured that all of them were meant for Unreal Engine 4, which is the older version that I was working on, and the newer version they changed the concept of movement input. And I suppose now, after I got a bit more advanced in that, it wasn't that a huge jump, but for me, back then, I really needed someone to hold my hand and show me step by step how it's done, 
and since it was transition period between two updates, there were really few Unreal Engine 5 tutorials explaining that, and it took me a lot of time, stumbling in the dark, just to understand the concept of enhanced input action that been introduced recently. Oh, it sounds very intimidating, but it feels great when you understand it, because it's actually an improvement of the old system. And to try explaining it simply, in order to have a character moving around in your scene, you need to create few things. First, an input mapping file. Sounds scary, I know, but it's just where you identify your controls in it. Like space for jump, left, right, top, down to move. But only identifying these controls won't move your character, because there is no action linked to it. This is where the character blueprints file comes. Inside it, you program what you want to happen when these controls are pressed. Like when pressing the left button, the character will go to the left. Now we can see our character moving. Great improvement. But it's moving without loading the running and jumping animation that we worked on on the last develop. Remember those? And to do that, we create an animation blueprint. In it, you describe when to load these animations. Hey, you made it this far. Please hang in there. I know it sounds very technical and maybe confusing to follow, but believe me, the basic logic of it all is simple. So please don't be discouraged and let's go back to the video. Where were we? Yes, the animation blueprint. So in it, you describe how to load these animations. When the speed of the character is zero, you load the idle animation, because it's standing still. But when you pick up speed, you load the walk and the run when it's over 100 and so on. But look closely here, the character is standing and suddenly walks, then suddenly runs and he walks again. This is now how it's supposed to be, at least not in the last 20 years. Usually in games, you have some sort of gradual blending between these animations. And in order to do that and smooth those snaps between these animations, you need to create a new sort of animation file called blend space. And I think the name is pretty self-explanatory because it's a space where you blend things in it. You see, inside it, this line represents the speed between 0 and 100. When it's 0, you have the idle animation loaded. Then more you increase the speed, the more it blends with the walk animation. You keep increasing it and it blends eventually with the run. Nice. So we end up with this structure, create the character controls here, blend between the animations and put them inside the character animation here. Then we load both of these inside the main character blueprint where you actually do the character programming while using the animation and controls as reference in the process. And to make it more confusing, inside the main character blueprint, we also load the 3D model and its skeleton alongside the physical assets, which contains the collision and how you interact with the physical world and bunch of other stuff. But I won't go very technical on you at this point, and let's just enjoy the fact that now I can have the character moves around and jumps in my testing environment. And that's all for this video. There is more things to show you in the next devlog, including making better controls and adding the mouse for targeting. Because until now, the character movement has been only keyboard based. And maybe I could also create an equipment system on top of that. As a reminder, be sure to check out our social media links to learn more about Stranded Away. And if you are interested in supporting the project, please check my Patreon page. And our community on Discord is an excellent place to stay updated and connected with like-minded individuals who shares your interest. And if anyone has an idea or suggestion, whether it's related to what I've already covered or an idea for future content, feel free to leave comments below. I have big plans for this game and can't wait to share this exciting journey with you guys. Please consider liking and subscribing to stay informed about the upcoming devlogs. And hopefully, I will see you there. Bye.